As a former player, you're so proud of our 2011 football Lenore Ryan Bears because they brought the prominence back to our athletic program. Lenore Ryan has a history of championships and to see that restored in 2011 makes you proud to be a Bear. I'm very proud of not only our football team, but our athletic department for standing behind our football program and standing behind our athletic programs to produce champions. Good afternoon. Talk about the game Saturday when you look at their offensive line, how big they were. What, what were your thoughts going into that? Well, you know, we, uh, we knew they were big, but, you know, I didn't take anything different going into that game. Uh, uh, it was just, it was, it was pretty tough out there. You know, they're, they outsized us by a lot. You know, they averaged like 6'4", or 3'30", had a guy who was 6'8", 360". But, you know, we did just like we do every game. We came out there and we tried him in the mouth as much as possible and we got the job done. Could you tell as the game went on, they began to wear down a little bit, especially with your speed versus their size? Yeah, they, they couldn't keep up, you know, with our defense, you know, because we're, we fly around to the ball and we're used to doing that. And, you know, uh, they, they did well for, you know, for up to about three quarters or so. Then they were, they were trying to pound it, but we, we, bent, we, we were bending a little bit, but we didn't break. So, you know, I'm real proud of my guys and my defense for doing that. From the stands, man, it sounded like the hits were pretty, pretty tough or hard. Was it, you know, was it? That on the field also. Oh yeah, on the field there were pretty big hits as well. Like we, uh, that hit by Chris Carter, you know, you know, probably the hit of the year. Uh, I was on the field running after it, and you can hear the whole crowd reacting to that hit. So it was, yeah, it was definitely a hard hitting football game. Still recovering from it, but you know, we'll be all, we'll all be good to go by Saturday. Were you surprised by their speed because they were probably one of the faster teams you've seen this year? They they had a lot of athletes. They really did. They uh, just you know they were big and strong and fast. You know, so I mean they they uh, they did well for a while. But you know, I think we just we were able to pull pull away because you know we are we work well as as a group and uh, you know they had a little bit more individuals. But you know when we work as a team, we're we might be unbeatable. From what you saw in Carson Newman's first game, from what you saw for Fort Valley, what, what are the major differences in those two teams? Well, you know, in those, uh, in those two games, uh, that, that Carson Newman game, they came out to play and we didn't. And, you know, that was our last loss. And we've, you know, we've come out to play every single game. And, uh, you know, just like last week, we, you know, it was a playoff game, a lot on the line, but you know we came out to play and we knew what we had to do and we got it done. You talk about the Carson Newman game, you're coming out to play. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, what's, so you go to Jefferson City this week with kind of a chip on your shoulder after what happened yeah. the first game up there. I mean, it, in a way, it sent you on your eight-game winning streak, but they also put the most points on you guys this year. Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, we take that personally. We really do. We, we. Uh, we really like to be the top defense in our conference. We take pride on that. And, you know, there's no excuse for what happened last time. You know, we, you know, basically we didn't come out to play, and they did, and that's why they won. That's why they whooped up on our defense, and we have five turnovers. And one other, you know, you guys are the two top rushing teams in the country. I think they're now. I think y'all have flipped positions based on last week. Right. How do you get ready for? I mean, of course, I guess you get a little ready with the team practice against every day, but. And you're going up against the number one rushing pack in the, in the land. What, how do you get ready for that? We just got to practice hard. We can't, you know, go through the motions or anything like that. We just really got to focus on uh, playing our fundamental techniques and being reading our keys and being where we're supposed to be and tackle who we're supposed to tackle. We got to be disciplined and we got to tackle and we got to just play hard football. Talk about the program from where it was when you got here to where you guys are now. Well, you know, it was uh, it was pretty tough when I first got here. Uh, you know, it was just I think it was uh, three and eight my freshman, my redshirt freshman year, and uh, it was just it, it wasn't you know uh, it wasn't a winning tradition. You know, it was just you know trying to get through the week just to get through it. You know, 
now, now everybody's you know just ready to go on Saturday. Everybody's ready to play. Everybody's ready to win, you know. And that old team just you know, it just it didn't feel that way. It didn't have that camaraderie, that unity, and uh, it just just didn't you know click right. But now we're you know we're on that winning tradition, and we like where we are, and we don't want to give it up yet. Randy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Spark. Uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. I'm major in health and exercise science. Uh, I graduate in December, and if you ask me what I'm doing after I graduate, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a job. Yeah, I'm gonna try. It's really good out there right now. It shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. You think the the <coughs> tightness of this group? You kind of referred to it a couple of times. How close you guys are? Do you think that's helped? transform from the three and eight to, to where you are now? Absolutely, because, you know, when you got team unity like this, you know, it's, uh, it makes it a lot easier because, you know, practice, you know, it's not the fun, it's not, you know, the best time of your life or, you know, weightlifting is hard, but when you got somebody that cracks up, makes jokes, and it helps it move along easier, and then you got people that, you know, push, push you, and you, you know, you want to push yourself, and when you push yourself, you, you know, that encourages others, others to push themselves as well. So, you know, it definitely makes it a lot easier to, you know, get motivated and keep winning. How did it feel for Fort I guess Fort Valley State, you guys are part of history. I mean, it's the first time they've been in the playoffs in 50 years. I mean, you kind of were a history making team. How did it feel when that game ended to realize what you guys had done, you guys had accomplished? I still haven't even realized it yet. You know, I've still got one goal in mind, and that's just to take it all the way and win the national championship. So. Once it's all said and done, then I'll look back and, you know, be happy, you know, that I'm actually going out on top, you know, because, you know, once I'm, you know, if we win a national championship, uh, I won't mind missing football at all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks again for being here. And uh, <clears throat> first, I want to start off just congratulations to Dave Marklin and the volleyball program for NCAA uh, tournament bid, and uh, congratulations to Coach Lentz for the great uh, start to basketball season. He works very, very hard. He's been a big supporter of ours in football, and you know his his track record here at Lenore Ryan is extremely impressive. And he's he's been a winner for many, many years. And so uh, glad that they're off to a fast start this year. Hope it continues. So, and as you you can see from Brandon, you know another one of our senior senior leaders, been a three-year starter, three-year first team All Conference. Uh, he made a uh, couple of uh, All-American teams uh, last year. I would expect him to probably do that again this year. Um, he's had an outstanding season. And, uh, you know, I said in the all-conference meeting, I thought he was, you know, he, he was one of the better defensive linemen in our league. And I think he's shown that all year. And so a big reason why we're playing pretty good on that side of the ball right now. And, and even more so, you know, he's, you know, graduating here in December. Um, very solid GPA. I think wants to go into uh, strength and conditioning. Maybe be a strength coach somewhere. So uh, hopefully we can help him find a find a place uh, to move on with uh, after he finishes up. Then so uh, just uh, outstanding young man. So spent a lot of time recruiting him uh, when I was an assistant uh, down in Spartanburg, going down there to see him at Dorman High School. Played an outstanding program down there, and uh, and uh, you know we didn't know if he would develop into. A defensive player, we thought at the worst he would be a great offensive lineman coming out, but he had a burning desire. He wanted to play on the defensive side of the ball, and I'm very proud of what he's done because he is, I always say, self made because we told him what he had to do to play on that side of the ball. He was extremely driven in his work ethic, and he developed himself into a, you know, an outstanding defensive player. So, very proud of him and what he's achieved in his, his time here, and hopefully, his time here can last a few more weeks. So, uh, we're very, very excited about the win Saturday against Fort Valley State. Um, they were every bit as good as we thought they would be coming in and uh, probably as, as athletic of a team and as much speed as we've seen since I've been at Lenore Ryan. And uh, you know, to put that together with their size, um, especially uh, their size and speed on defense, um, really, really challenged us on Saturday. It was a, it was a very tough, physical, hard-fought football game. Uh, very proud of our guys for the way they, they stuck together, hung in there, made big plays when we needed them, made some game-changing plays when we needed them, and uh, able to pull out the win 
uh, and, and, and just do a really s solid job of, uh, of getting to the second round. So, uh, you know, advancing into the second round, we run into a foe that we, we know very, very well. So there won't be a whole lot of surprises on Saturday. You know, we're, we're, we're going to be challenged going into Jefferson City for the second time this year, facing an 8-2 and two Carson Newman team that has had an outstanding year. You know, legendary head coach Ken Sparks. They have tremendous uh, tradition with the playoffs and deep runs in the playoffs in the past. And, you know, when I was playing in this league, you know, they were, you know, in the middle of their national championship uh, runs there when, uh, when on the tail end of the NAI and in, as we went into Division II, uh, you know, they've had a couple of uh, championship game appearances. So, you know, they're, they're used to being where they are right now. Um, and have a lot of experience as a staff being there. Uh, so, you know, going in there Saturday, we're going to, you know, we'll, just like last Saturday, we're going to be challenged. We're going to have to go in and play better than we did last Saturday. We're going to have to execute better um, on both sides of the football and on special teams uh, in order to have a chance to win. So, uh, just it should be an exciting day. You know, I think having two South Atlantic Conference teams in the final 16 in the, in the country, I think it says a lot about um, our conference as a whole. Uh, the fact that you'll have a South Atlantic Conference team in the final eight, um, you know, it's just the strength of our league and, uh, and just the, and a lot of parity in our league there. So uh, just, a, you know, should be a special day not only for our institution and for Carson Newman's institution, but also for the South Atlantic Conference. So I uh, want to start off with any questions about the Fort Valley State game. Coach, it seemed that uh, you guys kept a lot of poise in some of the crucial times of the game. Can you speak about that? Well, and we talked about it throughout the week. You know, coming into the game, Fort Valley State's the most penalized team in the league. And uh, you don't get that by accident. So we knew that, you know, to expect some things, some, some circumstances, some situations where our, our players will have to keep a cool head, uh, keep their composure. I thought really there in the last five minutes of the ball game, our ability to keep our composure in, in what turned into an extremely heated environment uh, really made the difference there where, you know, a couple of those penalties really made it to where us having to compete and it turned into a game that's, that's finished. You know, they, they have us pinned down deep in our territory and then they get the personal foul, then they get two more personal fouls and all of a sudden we're on their 25 and the clock's running down and we're able to kill it. So. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of our guys and the way they handled themselves. Uh, they handled themselves exactly the way I would expect them to and exactly the way, you know, it represents the kind of character that they have personally. On that note, they pulled their team mostly off the field and didn't go through handshakes. Did that, that bother you? Were you offended by that? Or do you think it was probably the best thing? I debated whether or not to take our team directly in, just given the situation. You know, because the thing that and, I, and you know when I when I was when I was able to get our offense over to the side during the during the middle of what was going on, I just told them I said, "Listen, guys, we've got a game next week. You know they don't. We've got a game next week. We can't afford to have anyone ejected. Uh, you know we need to be at full strength uh, going into Carson Newman. So we need to keep our composure." I said, "You know our team is bigger than your ego. So whatever happens, get back in the huddle, keep your mouth shut." And and because of of, of it being in that. You know, that situation, I, I even talked to the White Hat, the, the referee, about, about, you know, should I take my team directly in? You know, I'm, I'm wondering if this handshake's a good idea. He felt like it would be fine. So, you know, we went out for the handshake, but, you know, Fort Valley felt like that it was not, uh, was not appropriate, obviously. So I was able to find their head coach and just, you know, tell him, you know, best of luck and be safe going home. But, uh, it was probably for the best. Did he, any, did he have anything to say to you, Coach? No, he didn't have a whole lot to say. He was fairly rude to several of our assistants, but he, he was fine with me. How do you feel that was a game, you know, you've gone through all these where you've had some high scoring, big numbers, but uh, how does it feel to, to grind out a win like that, showing what you got first round of the playoffs and get a grinding win? In that well, game? and I think that's what you've got to do. You know, in, in order to, you know, our goal, you know, Brandon talked about our goal. And it's Carson Newman's goal too. You know, it's every, every, there's 16 teams in the country left, so it's all our goals. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make it to that goal, you're gonna have to win those games like that. You're gonna have to win games <clears throat> when, whether it's you're not on top of your game or things don't go your way or you're just challenged because they're good. You're gonna have to be able to grind out some tough, close, uh, hard-nosed games, which I anticipate that being the case this Saturday um, over in Tennessee. I mean, it, it, this is going to be a, an extremely physical, 
hard hitting. I mean, you have the two top rushing teams in the country going head to head Saturday. So it's, it's going to be a, a classic game. So Turnovers and time of possession seem to be the big difference between winning Carson Newman and losing. Uh, how much have you get talked about that with the team with it being kind of a weird, weird situation with Thanksgiving coming up, trying to get, get film and all that together? Well, the good thing is it's easy to get film. You know, we've, we've already got everything on each other. So we have a, with the conference video exchange policy, it's an open access deal. So they've got every game we've played and we've got every game they've played. And it's, it's real easy because we have, you know, we each have access throughout the year to anything the other, other teams do. So that's been, that's been easy. Uh, you know, as far as the turnovers, time of possession, I think that'll be crucial on Saturday. You know, we played a freshman quarterback over there in September. Um, we're playing a fifth-year senior quarterback over there uh, this Saturday. I think that'll be a, a major factor uh, in, in probably both of those uh, categories. But I think that we've got to, us and Carson Newman both have to do the same thing. We both have to be, do a good job of taking care of the football, uh, controlling the line of scrimmage, and run the football effectively. And the team that can, can do that and do that uh, more efficiently will be probably the team that wins the ballgame. You talked in the press conference after the game Saturday that uh, neither neither you guys, neither team is the same team as right. what you were originally. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What, what's different with you guys and what you expect to be maybe different with them? Well, the biggest thing that's different with us is is we're a lot more healthy right now than we were uh, going into that game in September. You know, Reuben Haynes did not play. Chris Carter, senior outside linebacker, fifth-year senior, great player, had, like Brandon said, had probably the hit of the year Saturday on Mike's interception return for a touchdown, did not play in that ball game. Um, Demetrius Green had been sick leading up to the game. Mike had a partially separated shoulder. You, know, you, had, you just had so many things going on that, you know, that was the middle of the, where I was wondering, are we snake bitten this year, you know, kind of deal, because we, we'd had that all throughout preseason. So with our team, the biggest difference is we're a healthier team now than we were in September. So. Uh, we're also a more seasoned team now than we were then. Reuben Haynes, you know, not only is he playing now, but he's had a full season of being the guy. Uh, Gerard Spears, that was kind of his first game where he kind of broke out. Now he's a all-conference running back, you know, one of the top runners in the conference at this point in the season. Uh, defensively, you know, that was the first game that, that, that we really, that somebody had really done what they did to us, you know, been able to move the ball like they did against us. We've not only recovered, but improved from that standpoint. So I, just, I think we're a much better team now than we were at that point in the season. I think they would probably say the same thing. You know, Brandon Haywood started the end of the year last year, but now, you know, he's the player of the year in the conference. Uh, uh, Baker, the, the, Brandon Baker, the running back, you know, first team all-conference player. They have the, their center uh, day, and Caleb Myrick shared the Jacobs blocking trophy. So they both had great seasons. Uh, Caleb was coming off of an uh, injury, injury last year, so you know, still trying to get his feet back under him. So it's just the teams are experienced, they're gelled, they're together, you know, they know who their guys are. That was an early season matchup. So both teams are much improved over the beginning of the year. They seem to start fast, 106 points. <coughs> Is that? you think staying, keeping it close or even or what, whatever you want to call it is important uh, out of the gate? Well, I think we've got to come out and play well in the first quarter, no doubt. Um, you know, they, they're an extremely talented offense. You know, we, you go into those all-conference meetings and, I mean, I, th I think every player they got on offense was nominated for all-conference. I mean, they're just, they're, they have outstanding talent uh, offensively and so, uh, we've got to do a good job of being ready to go when we get off the bus and, 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 and play well in the first quarter. Uh, we've got to do a good job of controlling their running game, keeping them from getting going early in the ball game. Uh, and I think we've got to do a good job offensively early in the ball game. But I think we will. You know, it's, I think last week, is a, being in that playoff atmosphere, being against a team uh, as athletic and big as Fort Valley State will help our kids really prepare for this week's game, you know, being, being in a second round game. Uh, I think they'll be much more comfortable this week than they were last week.
Yeah, that was no touched on that. How comfortable were you? I mean, was it a little jittery starting out that game? You know, it's time of new thing. Yeah, and I and I was worried about that going in. I tried to tried to make sure, you know, just keep everybody relaxed, keep everybody composed. It's just, it's just another game, but I mean. But it wasn't. They're, they're, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're not stupid. I mean, they, they, we've talked about it all year. I mean, we've talked about it all year, what we were trying to do this year. Now, all of a sudden, you're in the playoffs, you know, the first time in 50 years. And we've talked so much about, you know, the teams in the 60s and, and Hanley Painter and, and Coach Stasevich and the championship years. And now, all of a sudden, you know, we're kind of we're, we're forming a tradition of our own. And, and so it's very important to those guys that, you know, they want to go out and establish that for years to come, a team that can be looked upon for, for what it accomplished. And so, yeah, there was a lot of excitement. Uh, I, I do think that that added to a little bit of uh, nervousness. Um, you know, we had some missed checks. We had some, uh, some busts in coverage. You know, we had some things that we hadn't done the latter half of the season. And I think that had some to do with it. I think Fort Valley's talent had something to do with it also, but I think that the, the playoff atmosphere, we, get, we have to get used to playing on the big stage. How normal of a week are you going to be able to make this week? It's the Thanksgiving and... Really you really can't. I mean, it's, it's... I told the guys, though, it's, and, I, and I told my teams when I had high school teams that made deep playoff <laughs> runs, when you practice on Thanksgiving Day, that's special because you've had a special season. You know, there are very few teams in the country at our level that practice on Thanksgiving Day. So that's the way we're approaching it. This is a special thing. This is a great achievement to be able to practice on Thanksgiving Day. The last time I practiced on Thanksgiving Day, we had to get a snow plow and scrape the, scrape the parking lot to practice in the parking lot because the, the field was covered in snow. So it's, uh, at least we got a little bit better weather here this year. So, uh, but, you know, we're making it work. We'll have a little bit more time on Wednesday with no classes. Uh, Thursday, we're going to practice Thursday morning. Now, I've talked to a lot of people that have been in the playoffs and what they do with their schedule. We're going to allow our kids that live close by to go have Thanksgiving with their families. I know a lot of the guys are getting together. Uh, there's a group of guys getting together and doing Thanksgiving meal at one of the houses here close to campus. Uh, some of the kids are coming home with some of the coaches to have Thanksgiving there. So it'll be a, just a, a neat little uh, diversity with how we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving Day. And then we'll, we'll return uh, Friday morning, have a, have a meeting. Uh, early Friday morning to walk through here, eat lunch, get on the bus, right over to Jeff to uh, Morristown, actually, to the hotel there, and uh, just uh, spend the night there and get up and go to Carson Newman the next day. So as normal as we can make it, but you know, given where we're at and what we're doing, you know, it's, it was a lot of adjustment in schedule. How does the 54-man roster? How has that been adjusting that and making those decisions? It's challenging, and it, it bothers me too. I just, I talked to Coach Reich, and you know, I, I hope that someone can make some kind of a, uh, a plea with the NCAA that you know you have you have guys that have played, not just traveled, but they've played all year, and now all of a sudden, come playoff time, you have to tell them that they can't even dress. You know, if they've got to sit in the stands, they have to buy a ticket to get into the ball game and sit in the stands. Now they're out there practicing all week, helping us get ready, but. Then on Saturday they're going to buy a ticket and go sit in the stands, and that I have a real I have a real problem with that. Just not only from a standpoint of it, it's difficult on us as coaches making those decisions because you know there's some guys having to do some things they haven't done since you know maybe their freshman or sophomore year on special teams. Uh, now in the playoffs they're having to perform those duties again. It's you know it really leaves you very very thin at some spots, um, but also I think that there's there there are kids that have worked so hard and deserve just as much as anybody else to be on that field as the ones that are allowed to be on that field. I, I just wish they would maybe change it to 60. I mean, you know, if, if they gave you 60, that makes it just a little bit easier. You'd be, you'd, it would shock you how much easier that would make it. But that is, I think 54 is a little thin. That's my opinion. Does the roster have to be disclosed so you don't know who you're yeah, we have to turn it in on Friday night, and then we have a list of alternates that uh, will actually travel with us this weekend, and then I can change those out up to 10 minutes before kickoff. So, uh, but you can only have 54 warming up, and you can only have 54 on your sideline. Dressed, they can be on the, they can be on the sideline in street clothes if, they, if you have enough sideline passes. They also limit the number of sideline passes we have. 
So, so Mr. McGahee's got to find him a sideline pass from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> We got, we got a little frisky coach with a couple, a couple of pitch outs uh, during the process of the game. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you tell the offense in a situation like that? But obviously, take care of the football. But, uh, you know, it's just, I think that has a little bit to do with, um, you know, the atmosphere and, and the jitters with the playoff game and things like that. But, you know, we've done a really good job here the last half of the season taking care of the football. So I don't anticipate it being a problem on Saturday. Uh, you know, Ruben does a fantastic job. Uh, we got to make sure that uh, you know we do a good job in practice this week. Make sure the halfbacks, he and the halfbacks, are on the same page as far as pitch path relationship and stuff like that. So, but uh, you know, other than that, you know, I, I, I think we'll be okay on Saturday. Well, and, and what, how about your defense? Well, you guys. They have four trips into the red zone over six points. I mean, again, kind of the, you, again, one of the top teams in the country on the rush defense, and you may want to speak to this as well. But I mean, about what you, again, that whole bend but don't break. I mean, right. Well, I think we, I mean, we've done a pretty good job in the red zone all year. Right. You know, it's something we work on each week. Brandon can tell you we work on it uh, each week. We have some specific things that we run just down there in that area. Um, and again, you know, I've talked about it several times this year, you get down there, the, the field shrinks on you offensively. Uh, I think it, it plays into an aggressive, fast defense's hands because there's not as much room to operate. And so I think, I think we did a good job down there. We had a big sack from Jimmy Long and Brandon uh, down there in one trip that really put them in a, in a tough situation. We had obviously the big pick by Mike Green that uh, changed the game. In another situation, we had a big stop down there by uh, Meyer and Nolan on fourth down. So I just, I just think our kids have gained a lot of confidence in that even though they may be backed up. I mean, we've had a couple of times this year where they've gotten in on fourth down uh, and, and scored. So we've, we've taken them all the way to the brink, even from the one yard line. So I think our kids just have a lot of confidence down there that, that we can play and we can be successful even though you know the offense has done a good job of driving to get it down there or whatever. So. Uh, I think there are a lot of factors at play there. Second week in Rhodes, Roth had a big return. Um, you expecting them to make changes to where he may not get a touch on special teams? Or? I don't know. I mean, they've got they've got the best kicker in the league. He's got I don't know how many touchbacks, but it's a ton. Uh, they have great personnel, you know, with a lot of speed. So, I mean, if it were me, I'd kick to him. I mean, it, because because of what they have on their kickoff team, you know, not because Gerard's not a great returner. Um, so I just, I don't anticipate them to sky kick or anything like that. If they do, we'll be prepared for it. You know, we work those things each week, but, um, I mean, they just, they've got outstanding personnel, so I just, I'd kick away. They stuck pretty much to the dive against us the first time, <clears throat> and um, we struggled with the pullback against Mars Hill with what they did, so I was kind of surprised to see they Ran by 488 yards against Mars Hill. Um, did they were they going with the dive or were they getting it outside? Is that concern? Well, I think there's a couple of things. I think that uh, they were now they were a lot straight ahead against Mars Hill also. But I think that again, I think that's they they have the ability to do that this year. I think Brandon Baker being the size that he is. I mean, he is a big, strong kid, and, and, they, and they are very good up front. They're as good up front as we faced all year. I know they're not, they're not the size of Fort Valley State, but they're the speed of our defense, and so they do, they, they're going to do a great job of getting on us. We've got to really, really do a great job of moving our feet and controlling the line of scrimmage. But I think those factors are the reason they've been able to run north and south on everybody. Um, I also think, I think Morris Hill was a different team, honestly, after our game this year. I think after our game, they did not play as well you know, finishing the season out. I don't know if it was because of injuries or, or morale. You know, I don't know because I'm not in their locker room, but I saw them on film against Tusculum. I saw them, you know, on film against Carson Newman, and it's just not, it's not the same team that they were coming into our game. So I think you had two things going, going there in that last game of the year. Even though you lost at Carson Newman, you, you had more rushing yards against them than anybody all season. So I mean, there's something obviously to build off of. We talked about sure. the turnovers, but maybe kind of, Try to spotlight that with the team to show them, hey, you know, it wasn't. Our, our kids know. I mean, that's that ball game, I felt like, and I'm sure Coach Sparks would tell you the same thing. That score is not indicative 
of what kind of ball game it was. You know, there, there was twice that we, that we got it in a position where we're, we're getting it inside of 10 points in the second half. We get a holding call that calls back the long run by Gerard. And then two or three times there in the fourth quarter, we turn it over inside their 15-yard line going in, and they run it back. So, you know, you factor all those things in, that ball game should have been a 20-something to 20-something tight, hard-nosed ball game where somebody squeaks it out in the end. Um, their great play on defense, you know, forcing the turnovers, and then being able to capitalize on it offensively, that was the difference in the ball game. So hopefully we can avoid those mistakes. You know, they're a good football team. They don't need any help. So hopefully we can avoid those mistakes this time to where, you know, we, we're in a situation to have a chance to win the football game. Anything else? Newberry and Wendy clearly found a chink in the armor um, mm -hmm. that Carson did. And I know we have a different offensive scheme, but were there takeaways from watching those games that uh, uh, you thought we could uh, adapt to to, to, you, to uh, take care of some weaknesses? Or? Well, if, if Carson Newman will cooperate and turn it over like they did against the Wingus, <laughs> so we'll, we'll have a lot better chance to be successful. But, you know, yeah, we looked at, I looked at the Newberry game uh, last night, and I looked at the Wingate game this morning. We've looked at, um, you know, every game they've played this year since Sunday. So, obviously, we're going to take certain things from, from those games that we, that we think will help us. Um, and we'll also take certain things from Tusculum and Mars Hill and Brevard and, and some of those those games where they had tremendous success too. So, uh, you know, it's a thing where both of us are looking at every little thing that each of us have done throughout the year uh, in preparation for the ball game because this is just as big a ball game for them as it is for us. You know, so uh, you know it'll be should be an interesting matchup Saturday. So I hope, hopefully we can play well and have a shot. Thanks, coach. Thank, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Go Bears.